Okay, in this video we're going to cover uh, AMIs and how to create them. And so what is an AMI? AMI is an Amazon machine image and the purpose of them is to allow you to quickly um, create an EC2 instance from an existing EC2 instance that you've already spent a lot of time configuring and optimizing and you might have spent um, you know, a lot of manual steps on it, so you don't want to have to do that every single time you create an EC2 instance. If you, if you want to create basically um, more EC2 instances that are exactly the same as one that you've already created, you can create an AMI for it, and that's what we're going to do now in this example. So here um, we have an instance with Apache web server running and I have a custom web page on it. So let's just pretend that we already that we installed it and you know we configured it and, and it's running just the way we want it and now we want to create more uh, web servers every time we create an EC2 instance. So this one right here, test web server, here's the public IP. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that in just to show that it's working. And here it is. Here's the custom message. Hello world from Isha's web server. So now we know this instance is running and now we know we want to create an AMI out of it. So the first thing that we got to do is we actually should stop the um, that instance before we create the AMI. So let it stop. It's going to warn us about possible data loss. That's fine. Okay, once it's stopped, we're going to then create an AMI from it. Give it a second to make it stop. And what we can do is actually we can just go to um, once it's selected, we can actually start the process as it's stopping. I mean, the main reason why you want to stop it first is that in case there's processes that are running, you want to have everything stopped before you create the AMI because it's essentially taking a snapshot of your EC2 instance. So in this case, okay, here it's showing you stopped. We're going to go to here, actions, imaging, image, create image. So then I'll just ask you to create an image name. So we're going to say test web server AMI. Uh, and then for the description, let's just say Apache web server. Okay, so now we know that's going to come uh, with that EC2, with that image, with that AMI. And that's it. We just say create image. Oops. And there we go. So now it's going to start the process of creating the image. And we can see that under here, under images, under AMIs. So there's our image that we said to create. It's creating that image right now. It'll take a couple of minutes or so. So I'm going to pause the video and let it finish creating, and then we'll return after. Okay, so we're back, and now we have the AMI available. It's right here. So what we could do is we can actually create and launch an EC2 right from this AMI right here. All we have to do is do this and say launch, and we just select our instant type. So we say P2 micro, and then here we can leave the defaults or leave everything as in the default VPC. And then we add the storage. If you look here, this is this is actually the important part where it tells you that it's coming from the AMI. The snapshot is from the one that we took when we created the AMI, and that's um, this is how you know that this is created from the AMI. Then we can add tags. We could say, um, oops, name, and then test web server, we'll call it, let's say this, test web server from AMI. Then the security group, we're going to be using a security group we already created from before. So this security group will allow um, HTTP traffic and HTTPS traffic from anywhere in the world. And we can also SSH and ping that instance. And review and launch. And then this is the key that we should have already created. So you need to create a key pair to access your uh, EC2 instance. So now we launch it. And now it's right 
here. So it's still in the process of being launched. I'm going to show you another way that you can create um, an EC2 instance based on an AMI. So what the first way was going into the AMI dashboard here and creating it right from here. The second way is if you go and just create an instance like this, and then in the like normally we would choose Linux 2 AMI. That's just the standard AMI that Amazon provides for us. But you can go here to my AMIs and there's the AMI that we already created. So we can just choose that AMI and then go through the same process as we did just now. And, and then again, you see in the storage, it comes from the snapshot of the AMI that we took. And then for the tags, we'll add a name and we'll call it test we'll call it web, web server for AMI2, so then we can differentiate between the two instances. We'll select the existing security group for the web server. And it looks like everything here is good. We're going to launch it with our key pair. Okay, so now we have two EC2 instances that we launched based off of the AMI. We have this one here and this one here that's being launched. And then we also have the original one that we ba we got the AMI from, from that, and we, which we stopped. So now we can actually start it. And, oh, sorry, I need to just select that single one here. So now we're gonna start it like that. So now we are going to have three EC2s up and running with the original web server that we configured manually and then the two AMIs that we um, the, the two instances that we created from the AMIs. Okay let's start with this one it looks like it's already running so that one so this test web server from AMI has a public IP of 395.176.237 if we Paste that. There we go. So now we get the same um, message that we got from our original EC2 instance. So now we know that one's working. Let's try the next instance from the AMI, which is this IP, 1812.179.219. Copy that. And if we paste it, we get the same message. So that's great. And then back to our original one, which is the test web server. It has this, this uh, IP address, and if we paste that, okay, great. So now we could see that all three, all three instances are up and running. They're essentially a copy of each other, and this is a very quick way, an easy way for you to create additional instances um, without having to manually reproduce all the steps. Um, final thing I was going to show you is um, you can also add permissions here. So for instance, if you go into your AMI and you want to give other accounts permissions, so you can modify image permissions, you can also make your AMI public, so it'll be available to everybody. Uh, but if you want to keep it private and only add specific um, accounts, so you can add different account numbers to allow them to access your AMI. Um, this little thing here to create the volume, that will allow them to make a copy of the AMI um, kind of officially, but unofficially you could still create a copy by just launching an EC2 off of that AMI and then creating a new AMI from that running, uh, from that new EC2 that you created. So you can kind of create a copy of an AMI either way, but this sort of gives you an official way to create a copy if you, if you allow that. Um, the other thing I was going to show was... Um, you can, I think there was a way to transfer, uh, is it this one? No, sorry. Uh, anyway, there was a way that you can transfer the um, AMI to other regions. So you can, um, you can make it um, in such a way that, um, one sec, let me, let me pause for a second.
Okay, so I found what I was going to show you guys. So I wanted to show that you can copy the AMI to another region. So what you can do is when you select the AMI, you can um, select copy here, and then you can actually give it a totally different region that you can copy that AMI to. Because the, the thing with AMIs is they're locked to a specific region, so only people or only accounts in that region will be able to see it. But here you can actually make a copy of it so that you to make the AMI available in other regions. So you could do that and, and then it'll be available there. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show was that you can um, delete the AMI or unregister it. So you can just do that and say deregister and that will make the AMI unavailable. So we'll do that. I don't have any more AMIs, but the interesting thing is, is that the instances are still running, so they're not affected because the AMI was just a snapshot, so you just deleted that snapshot.